Brian is the executive vice president and uh, really runs all strategy and, 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 and business development, m and I'll call it, okay? You know, right? Did the archivist acquisition, yeah, right? Wasn't yeah, that you? Exactly. And uh, really responsible for the day today, right? I mean, that was sort of your, you, you kicked it off and, and uh, you yep. sort of had the team really yep. execute on this. Yep. No, I had a great time. Congratulations, Thank really Thank great, you. great announcement. Get nice and close to the mic. Yeah. Have uh, um, how much coverage? I mean, uh, did you guys get into the 3D scaling and the 3D management and some? Oh uh, yeah, we covered like talking about all, all, all day. day. Yeah, okay, it's good. been great. And and we, we had a, a lot of analysts on. So ESG was on. IDC, oh, Ray Lucchese, David Floyer talking about 3D scaling and the differentiation there. And we then had the over 5,000 views. Oh, great. In here, so it's over our normal benchmark of uh, 10x uh, of a physical event size. So looking pretty good. Awesome. And the content cloud got a lot of play. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. the okay. real different Did people story. Be able to I mean, were people able to link that together in terms of the foundational elements of the infrastructure and the infrastructure cloud and virtualization? Because I think that's one of the key ones. That some Talk people about may, that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, some people may or may not understand is if you don't have the virtualization layer for the infrastructure, not just at the server side, but down at the storage layer, you can't really do a lot of these other things. And so if you can't heterogeneously virtualize down below, and I think hopefully you heard it from our customers today, that oh, yeah. data migrations, being able to <laughs> dynamically move data around without interrupting the application, that's where it's at. We and heard so, the siloed message too, the application silo, data silo. Absolutely. That was loud and clear. The software was a very interesting stat. I think you had it up on stage, you said that your business has changed. Yep. Can you talk more about that? Because we, we drilled in with Jack a bit on that. He elaborated, but I wanted to get your opinion on that since you quoted it. The thing was over 50% was your revenue number? or Right, yeah, so, some yeah so seven years ago, our software and services percent of our total company revenue was 20, probably 23% of our revenue. And so that's pretty low. And you know, if you think about it, right, the heritage in terms yeah, of hardware, the Lightning yeah. product and the high-end hardware. Selling gear. Selling gear, right. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people were doing, say, seven to 10 years ago. Um, Today it's 45% of our revenue, 46% uh, of the revenue, depending on kind of how you look at it, and we're looking to get over 50% here very quickly. And it's more a matter of the software is changing and leading and kind of changing the dynamics in terms of what people want to buy. And so it's the command suite is just as important today as the virtual storage platform that we're talking about today. So it's kind of the, the combination here, and that's really, you've seen it in terms of our mix of business just because we're really focusing on that customer problem. And if you, more or less. if you could simplify the, the, the pricing model a little bit, get to more of an on-demand model, yep. that number should explode. Correct, correct, yeah. and we are. We're actually simplifying that quite a bit here going forward. Yeah, good, so. that, that's great. So, um, I mean, the other big message uh, that we heard was the, the content cloud, yep. you know, and uh, and that comes back from the archivist acquisition as well as the some of the partnerships you have yep. uh, with guys like Blue Arc. The, yep. That's different, right? I mean, especially at this scale. Right. You know, you really don't, don't hear that. You, you used to, you're thinking about Hitachi as OLTP. Right, right. right. So talk a little bit about that, because uh, you were heavily involved in that strategy sure. and working on it. Sure. It just, sure. just didn't fall out of the sky. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, so we've been look, working on that for years. Um, if you look at it, you know, the, we work in the, I mean, we talk about petabytes today, which is not a funny word, and exabytes is not as funny a word as it was before, and zettabytes, zettabytes is now not as funny a word as it was a few years ago. Do you know what a zettabyte is? <laughs> you explain it to the EMC world. A thousand, yeah. A thousand so, billion? Yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, so, I, the big premise that we have, and we actually have some very leading edge customers that are deploying this today, is, is in the future, everything's going to be looked at as an object. Everything. And even over time, you think maybe even a row in a database will be looked at as an object. Mm -hmm. How many objects is IT going to have to manage? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. A lot of blobs. It is. I mean, yeah. if you start looking at it. So if you start talking about kind of the unstructured data world, the semi-structured, and even some of the structured, over time, you're going to have to have a common kind of normalization layer on how do you actually manage those objects. And so what I find most customers, kind of the, um, the, the, the phases that they're in right now is most customers either own the unstructured data problem or are about to own the unstructured data problem. Like, so all the file servers are owned by the business units yeah, and yeah, yeah. so either they don't care about it now or pretty soon they actually care a lot about it. And so the, the content cloud is a whole idea of how do you actually manage at the core and do all the services there. And you kind of have to. So we have some customers, we have a leading edge healthcare company in, the, in Europe, and actually they have their billing systems, so structured stuff, as well as all their unstructured, all the radiologies, PAC systems, et cetera, all normalized at our layer. And then they can actually do all the contextual stuff down there because the amount of objects you need to manage are so huge. And this is where you start changing from the petabytes and exabytes yeah, kind of yeah. language to, yeah. How many billions of objects do you have to manage? I think I, I was. I mean, I think I was really impressed how you guys positioned the content cloud because it it was good marketing in the sense that content cloud takes away the structured feel of 
content being everything, right? So content is content, right? So it's like, it kind of gives me this Facebook image. Like, I know this everything's in there, yep. but it's not like, oh, I did my email. Right. Is my, where's all my email content? So it just gives me that, that feeling of, of uh, transparency to the data. Yep. And I think no one's ever done that. I'm not, I'm not seeing anyone actually put a stake in the ground saying, hey, content cloud, it's just everything. Yeah. Not, don't worry about it. Yeah. Which kind of brings up the whole siloed app problem, exactly. which is a well, huge issue right now. Well, it's it's a siloed infrastructure, like silos yeah. <laughs> of storage, and you have silos of apps. And so yeah, how do you yeah. kind of help bridge those two worlds together? The other thing I was really impressed with is the 3D scaling, because you know scaling up, everyone knows that. You just throw stuff at but the scaling out, no one's been talking about scaling out. Uh, even some of the best researchers working on that distributed mindset, yep. and the scaling deep, um, great tie-in. Scaling out, how real is that right now? And where are you on the roadmap to scaling out? What, what do you, I mean, well, what's just, your? Well, most people I talk to about scaling up, they get that. Scaling out, it's like, okay, the more distributed content I have everywhere, yep. and not knowing who caring what partition I send it to. Oh, are you thinking geographic distribution? Ge geographic or, data centers, yeah. geographic servers, I've got a piece of content, we're going to 1080p video. Yep. I just throw it out, so it just goes somewhere in some tier. Right, you know, just, right. It's just out there, but I got to discover it. Got it. So Got it. that's distributed. It's round trip times involved. Yep. It's complicated. Yep. It's math. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> and not a lot of people have figured that out. Right. <laughs> so so, it are, so I mean, tell us about that. Well, so when you look at the virtual storage platform, when we talk about 3D scaling, we're talking about kind of more of just how do you scale at more of the block level? Okay. And then how do you then link it to the content level over time? So what we have today is, is actually all of that stuff on the truck at the block level but we need to take it to the next level in terms of the content. For the content, we have a lot of, uh, and that's a big growth part of our overall business, but um, we have a lot of, of use cases for that. The thing that we're actually working on more now around the content cloud, and Jack didn't have a chance to get into a lot of detail, but the analogies around OLTP transaction systems and data warehouses actually exist now for the content world as well. I don't know if Jack talked about this or he not. He didn't, he didn't. He didn't, but um, I've heard him talk about it before. A yeah. Previous SNW, he talked about it a yeah, little bit. Yeah, but it's like, you know, if you take that analogy, yeah. OTP transaction systems, you need to keep fast, and fast and lean and mean, and then you think Reserve about- Reserve for the most high cost, performance, mission critical. Whatever you need to do for processing, yeah, right? Yeah. And you need to keep it fast, so what did you do? Okay, well you strip out a record, put it in a data warehouse, it's your immutable record, you want to keep things fast, and then you want your, your warehouse to actually then feed your data marts and your BI and your analytics. Mm -hmm. Take that analogy to file and content. You want file or NAS or whatever the heck you want to call it, pro file protocols, just go do what it does. It's file processing, right? So if you want high file processing, scale out, imaging, whatever you need it to do, that's at your OLTP. Your content cloud is your data warehouse for unstructured data. Yeah, so this is why I like your vision because you're not saying you have to own the database, yeah. you know, you're saying let's let's manage it, Correct. let's manage that information, Correct. and that's again unique. Everybody's trying to own everything these days. Right. We got a stack, and we yeah. work a open world right. last week, and you know, Sirius owned it. We own everything, <laughs> closed our chips, our Correct. servers, our storage, Correct. our database. Yeah. So we say, look, let's just manage it. Let's head, give a customers. framework to manage it and some products to manage you it. You got it. And let's be inclusive. Let's be able to plug in. Well, there's no openness in Oracle Open World. There's <laughs> actually closed world. Oracle closed um, world. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's what people point. are saying. It's, it's Openness is a big message, you guys have that. You mentioned that again. So tell us more about that. Where is that going in terms of the development cycles? And are there any entrepreneur opportunities out there that from your perspective, do you see any white spaces for entrepreneurs? Sure, uh, yeah, I mean, so that's been our heritage around openness, right? You think about standards, even back to SMIS or mm -hmm. any of the older standards as well, we've always been embracing those. So um, I think you'll continue to see us be open. I think that's really, if you look at it, you have to be horizontal. And you know, if you yeah. think it's actually interesting, um, some people still don't believe that we uh, virtualize heterogeneous storage environments today, which I find very funny. We've been doing it for years, yeah. but you can imagine the tough strategic discussions we had, say, seven or eight years ago, oh, yeah. around we're a storage company. So Are we going to lose you know, right. business if we well, do yeah. this? Well, yeah. So like, oh, we're a storage company. Yeah. So how it's do a you? Good bet. Good but, decision. Well, it ended up being a great decision. But if you think about it, it's almost like the two decisions that were made, say, seven, eight years ago, that were really critical. That was one. The other one is where should storage virtualization live? You guys remember the whole yeah, in yeah. the network, should it be in the network or or in the controller, controller and the right. network and the controller. And we really thought back to what's the key customer challenge. In the, con in the network, it causes more complexity, right? right? More points, more all of that. If you put it in the control, it can be very simple. You can turn it on, do whatever you want to do with it. And then the other one was more a matter of, we would love yeah, for yeah. everybody just to only buy from us 
yeah. know that's not reality, right? You have M&As, even if they love what we do, you go out and, be, you know, um, yeah. Lloyd's buys HBOS. Okay, well, we were, it's just, it's just life, yeah. right? So I think yeah, yeah. those things, those things are actually um, have been a key part of our Even Oracle right? won't, won't own all the world. It will, it will want to, but. <laughs> the question is, is how much will customers really want to give, how much of their IT budget will they be willing to give to an IBM or an or I, I don't know the question of this, but you know, I hear these from customers and it's not just a support and maintenance and pricing issue. I think it's just more a matter of share of wallet. Yeah, and, it's, I don't know and, and it is the that. mother of all lock-in. I mean, I mean, at, at VMworld, you heard Oracle customers complaining that they would basically charge, that when they virtualize Oracle, they would charge them licenses on a, on a VM basis. And yep. You can't do that. And so we're and Oracle, we're going to do it. And the VMware yeah. executives on earlier, uh, Parag Patel, you know, talked about transparency. We're living in a day now where it wasn't like Microsoft in the old days. It's a lot more vendors involved. Sure, and, sure. and what we talked about was, is that openness is ultimately where the people are innovating. So when you see openness, they're not afraid to say, hey, we're open. Right. So normally when you see open, you see innovation. Uh, and when you see close, you see protecting, extract yep. the rents out of my position. Yeah. And then those kinds of things. Good margins so, for a while. So, so you know, sure. to me, when someone says I'm open, actually opens the covers. Right. They're right. actually not afraid, and they actually are doing innovation. Yeah. And that's kind of one of our little acid tests when we talk to clients, how open are you? Yeah. Well, we're open. Well, show us open. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, right. And I think yeah. our partners probably did a very good job today yeah. just talking oh, yeah. about kind of how open we are. And I think it's really a around the respective ecosystems, right? It's not just our ecosystem. It's also working within theirs. And, um, you know, if you look at it, and I think what you'll see with the VSP as well is how much more do we help enable the server virtualizations. And it's amazing to me, um, a couple stats I just read. One was uh, they're forecasting that customers will spin up 80 to 120 million virtual machines in the next 12 months. 80 to 120. Now, again, it's a bunch of different forecasts. Who knows if it's exactly, even if it's a quarter of it. There's a lot. It's a huge, <laughs> huge amount. Way more it, than physical. And what's interesting for me, and I travel all over the world, so even talking to customers in more remote areas, it's amazing to me how often customers are saying, my default standard on the server side is you will be virtualized. And you need to have a business case. The business and the application guys need to have a business case to why not. onto why not. Yeah. And let me tell you, you think that that's a big, big shift. That's a line in the sand. Um, it is. It's a and, total line in the sand. And you know, you think about it, like DBAs want to see their spindles and their servers, and I mean, you think about that world that we've lived in forever. The gala runs at SAP at Levi well, Strauss. Right? Probably, yeah, yeah, right. That wasn't an easy decision for them to, Correct. to, to virtualize. And it. so I think if you look at that, that's just going to continue to kind of go throughout the whole, so we're living in that virtual world. We talk about the culture that, that impacts the, within the IT organization. Oh, it's huge. a cultural shock. Huge. I mean, I'm used to having my siloed organization. Absolutely. Network guys, app guys, you know yeah now virtual size whoa it is so it what is. do you what do you hear from customers when you when you talk with them you know is, I it, think is you, it the blunt instrument over the head carrots sticks uh, and carrots I mean how do you motivate uh, well I think um, at least on the server virtualization my my humble opinion is just more the cost savings are so obvious the CIO is gonna force it down and that's yeah. kind of what you see there in terms of how the organizations are changing you get all kinds right now. I, don't th I think it'd be very interesting to see kind of, um, you Any know, how common we common pattern you're seeing? Not, not yet, not yet. Um, you know, it depends on how distributed or centralized they are. I see more centralized organizations certainly today than I did three years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. But the question is more matter your point around yeah. silos for storage and networking and uh, it's we're interesting. Seeing, I mean, the pattern we're seeing is chaotic. It's really not, the, <laughs> the only consistent thing is, it's coming. Yeah, exactly. Right. But what's yeah. the best model? And I don't yeah. think that that's yeah. been. And some there's some rogue organizations where you have you know mutinies going on. Somewhere mm -hmm. it's the CIOs getting shafted by the guys underneath, or the CIOs yep. going down saying you got to do it. Yep. All kinds of POCs going on, oh, yeah. red herring. So it's it's yep. really crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And Dave, Dave, are you seeing the same? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think that I think you're right. There's a there's a class of customers saying no more silos, and they're, right. they're busting the silos. And and but it's in pockets. Right. You know, there's no right. there's no clear trend that that, that we can discern. Yep. It depends on industries. And sure. Like you say, the culture, the distributed nature of the organization. I wanted to talk a little bit about the whole M and A activity. We've just seen some sure. insanity. We, you know, we <laughs> had three par on last week at Open World. They were all smiles for some reason. I uh, can imagine and, why. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, what does that all mean to uh, Hitachi? What's your what's your angle on the whole M&A? Well, activity? if you look at, I mean, I think, and Jack did, I think, a pretty good job about talking about it today, is our strategy is very integrated. So first and foremost, it's got to be integrated. Second, it's got to be open. So, I mean, you take that as a premise, and M&A for us is to complement a strategy. M&A is not a strategy, right? And I'm not 
placing judgments on that. It's just kind of that's how we look at it. Yeah, every company's different. Everyone's company's different in how you want to implement it. Right. And, but for us, if it's got to fit into that integrated strategy, and so for that, we're going to be very selective. You mentioned archivists. Great. That's going to be a core part of that content platform. We picked up some IP of a company called Periscale. Yeah. And so, you know, how does that fit in as an ingest engine right. to help with the file and content and the content cloud? So, I mean, it's, for us, it's all about making sure it fits in an integrated strategy and make sure it's open. We are pretty clear about how far we want to go up or not want to go up mm -hmm. just because we aren't interested in creating more and more silos or I'm going to own the whole stack or I'm going to compete with everybody so, and their brother. So you were tempted to bid on three par, is that what you're telling us? Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Domain? Or, yeah, right, right. So, uh, you know, um, yeah, it is what it is, but yeah. uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, everyone I has their own answer there. <laughs> well, He's kind of, yes, no? I have plenty of opinions yeah. on that, let's put it that way, but anyway. So it's but integrated and open are the key ones that we that's the filter that we use in terms of any M and A strategic partnership or build decisions that we do. Well, I think the other thing too is that you know you hear a lot of talk about big companies getting acquired. You know, uh, NetApp CEO uh, uh, Tom Georgens and his predecessor Dan Wormenhoven frequently had to say, "Well, here's why we're not going to get acquired." And you hear a lot. And Joe Tucci does the same thing. EMC, UGMC, people talking to get acquired. You don't expect that Tachi's going to get acquired, you know, ninety-seven billion dollar company, right, right? Right. So it's not as though you're forced, your hand is forced to go acquire Correct. because you're taking a, a defensive approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just doesn't play into the equation. At the same time, do you f do, you, do you feel like sometimes you've you've got to be tempted to to play in that game and, and protect some of your your assets? Well, I mean, you again, you have to pick and choose. Right. I think where what's important and what's not. I mean, if you look at what HP wants to do or IBM, they all have very different models, right? I mean, IBM's model is all around analytics and software, and that's a big shift for their business since Huge. five, seven years ago, which is all about services. Right. Um, HP is all about the infrastructure, and they have some pretty big pocketbooks, right? I mean, you look at even HP and Dell, and you know, Michael Dell is obviously a pretty aggressive kind of guy. They have about similar cash on the balance sheets. But if you look at the assets and the enterprise value, it's probably 5x the enterprise value is at HP relative to Dell. Yeah. So right. even they have limits in terms of how much they'd be willing to pay for certain things. So, um, you know, my take is it's, it's, a, it's a swing of a, you know, we're in this consolidation phase. We'll continue in this consolidation phase. I expect more McAfee's, Intel's, you know, the next yeah. rumors that are all out there about different storage companies. That will continue. The real question is we'll be sitting here five years from now and will we see that trend continuing that way or will we see okay well now we'll see more of this divestitures in terms of figuring out where the best of breeds and well and, and the big the other big thing about Hitachi is you guys invest you got a big R&D budget Correct. you have synergies across yeah, the organization absolutely. that a lot of companies just don't don't have a lot of companies have to go acquire uh, Correct. You know, Correct. for a variety of reasons and it seems like you got you got patient capital there we do, and the innovation, you had talked about that before, but the $4 billion that we do, I think we invested last year just alone on R&D, but that innovation has, it's the heritage, right? So that's how you can continue to do that and have some great solutions like the VSP and Command Suite. And talk about like talk about a question I want to ask is, talk about the marketing. I mean, Hitachi, this event is really kind of a, is a statement event. Yeah. Mm. You guys have a lot, you know, you have your heritage out there, the drums are beating <laughs> You come yeah. before you came out on stage. I mean, yep. you're not hiding from that. but. You're not known for being super aggressive on the marketing front, yep. but this is a pretty big event. And well, is, that a, is that a tone you're setting? or I think so. I mean, we're not a marketing company, and that's okay. Because we're but a product. But you've got to market your product. Correct. Exactly. And I think that's the big distinction you've probably seen from us, or will continue to see from us, is basically we're a great product and technology company. We have thousands and thousands of customers that love what we do. So our job is just to get the word out, right? And yeah. so I think if you look at what you'll see more and more from us is, again, we're not a marketing-led organization. We're a product and technology company, and marketing will play its role. And so I think what you'll see more and more, and today I thought was the most valuable for me is listening to the customers, listening to our partners. But, you know, getting the customers and so all we're doing. It was a good marketing event. It was a pretty good marketing event. Yeah. Really, really good marketing event. Yeah, yeah. And, but from my standpoint, it's how do you actually just get the word out? And, and from my standpoint, it's the... Um, we have so many great customer testimonials and just so many customers. I don't know if you listen to a bb and in there or whatever. I mean, they just Yeah, we love, were broadcasting it live. Yeah, they love what we do. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, from that standpoint, just how do we continue to get the word out? And for us, the best marketing we have is just reference selling. Just yeah. go talk to so-and-so. Go talk to this. You know, we've got so many different customers that most people don't know. Just go talk to each other and find out what works and what doesn't. And that's a big change. Five, six, seven years ago, you didn't see that kind of reference marketing at an yeah. HDS event. Yeah, you know, exactly. You, you talk about the customers, well, we can't really say the CIO from some sure, large bank. Sure, sure. Yeah. And now you've got them on stage. Exactly. You know, so that's, that's, and that's testament to the fact that your product 
does what it, you said it would do. Right, and that's know? again, that's our heritage too, around just the transparency and the honesty. Not a lot of hype. Not a lot of hype. Exactly. It's Shipping kind of. Yeah, we're just that's kind of our culture, and so yeah. we're kind of not the not a BS type organization. It's all about just kind of let's go out there, add as much value as we can. We'll tell you what we know, what we don't know. Here's how we think we can add value for you, and then we're kind of actually even surprised and amazed at even some of the use cases and savings that some of our customers have. I think I mentioned that over 85% of the customers that implemented our virtualization solution got a payback in 18 months or less. Yeah, right. I mean, like, shocking from, you know, this is an independent third-party company that went and did that for us. And I was like, wow, that's a pretty big statement. Let's talk about customers for a second. For the folks out there who are, you know, who are getting to know you guys you know, through this broadcast that might not have known the inside baseball, if they, if, what would you tell them and said, when you, if you talk to a customer, what would they, if they talk to a customer, what would the customer say about Hitachi to them? If they ask, if they ask the customer, hey, you're working with Hitachi, what do they work, like working with? Um, so I've, I've had customers actually just talk about some of their experiences. So I think at the end of the day, they talk about the people. Yeah. They really would. I mean, th which em embodies a culture and all the, the Hitachi spirit. But I think just in general, we had a customer that had a flood in uh, Southern California here a couple years ago, and he was speaking at our customer council. And just talked about basically how the first people on site were the folks that were supporting you know, the Hitachi environment. They were the last people to leave for three and a half days. And they were not just focused on the Hitachi stuff. They were focused on just helping the CIO get back up and running. I mean, they're out there sweeping things around. I mean, they're doing all kinds. It's all about kind of yeah. going above and beyond. It's a commitment. Customer. It's a commitment. And that's kind of really from our standpoint. I think if you look at our core, it's all the people that just kind of make a great organization. And it's very fun. Loyal. It's fun to be very loyal. I mean, and it's just a... Um, it's a it's a great company to be at, and the fun thing for us is we're you know we're doing well in the marketplace. We're growing. You know, we're business growing. is good. Business is good, and yeah. so that from that standpoint, it's a it's you a made a good, good product. And you get the word out now. You got word of mouth networks with Twitter and all these kind exactly. of uh, you know transparent communications. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. It's great. Cool. We're here with Brian Householder, uh, senior vice president, executive vice president at uh, Hitachi Data Systems. Brian, it was great having you on the cube. Thanks for your time. Thank today. you so Thanks much. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Nice job.